काहे के भरनी कौन तारी से बीनी रे चदरिया 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 जो चादर सूर नर मुनि ओढ़ी ओढ़ के मैली की नी रे चदरिया 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 दास कबीर जतन से ओढ़ी जो कि तो धर दीनी रे चदरिया Kabir's immortal verse likens weaving to a spiritual pursuit, bringing to it divine insights and aesthetic heights. The impulse to adorn even the simplest utility object is a basic human trait, but to imbue it with spiritual values is perhaps rare. Such a rare instance is found in India's rich textile heritage, going back at least 5,000 years. Through the ages, Indian textiles with their sophisticated designs and spinning, dyeing and weaving processes were in great demand across the old world. The Indian textile industry today continues to be mainly cotton based. Since independence it has seen many developments in which the Ministry of Textiles, Government of India has played a major role. Cotton is one of the major crops cultivated in India it accounts for more than 75% of the total fiber consumption in spinning mills and more than 50% of the total fiber consumption in the textile sector. In view of the importance of cotton to the textile economy, the government launched the Technology Mission on Cotton in February 2000 to bring about tangible improvement in the productivity, in the quality of cotton and to reduce the cost of production. Technology Mission, the TMC, we call it in cotton, आज इंडिया कॉटन में इतना प्रोडक्शन रिकॉर्ड तोड़ रहा है हर साल और कॉटन ग्रोवर सूखी है एमएसपी करने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी जीनिंग प्रेसिंग में जो हमको या मार्केटिंग यार्ड में सुविधा देनी चाहिए बहुत सुविधा हमने दी यानी कि अच्छी क्वालिटी तैयार करने के लिए टीएमसी प्रोजेक्ट का पूरा लाभ पूरे देश ने लिया है गुजरात महाराष्ट्र ने और साउथ में सविशेष लिया है लेकिन ये भी स्कीम बहुत अच्छी काम में आई है India is emerging as a major player in ready-to-wear garments and apparel. In branded as well as unbranded garments, Indian manufacturers have a notable presence in domestic and international markets. The material, cut, fitting and stitching of branded high-end Indian garments offers world-class quality at affordable prices. India is becoming the preferred place for foreign firms to outsource manufacture of garments. I personally feel the textile industry or more so the apparel industry is very suitable for India especially it is labor intensive and a dollar earning industry. Presently 8 million workers are employed in the apparel industry and uh, another 5 million people are employed in the textile industry totally making it 13 million people. In the long term I feel this industry has a good future right from spinning, weaving, processing and garmenting. There is a long road ahead for India to grow both in terms of uh, earning dollars as well as creating big employment. Considering the need to upgrade technology in different segments of the textile industry, the Government of India launched a Technology Upgradation Fund scheme, TUFS, with the objectives of 5% reimbursement of the normal interest or 15 to 20% credit linked capital subsidy for the small scale sector. 5% interest reimbursement plus 10% capital subsidy for specified processing machinery, garmenting and technical textiles. The response to Tufts has been phenomenal. In fact, in the past three, four years, the projects which are incentivized by Tufts are of the order of 3,500 crores, it went to 7,000 crores in the next year, more than 15,000 crores during the year 2005-06 and during the year 2006-07, 
the total cost of the projects which are going to get the benefit of TUFs and which have been sanctioned by the financial institutions is approximately 80,000 plus crores. The segment of India's population with disposable incomes has grown dramatically. Supermarkets and malls showcase the best on offer. Spurred by this, prominent fashion designers regularly display their work at prestigious shows in Mumbai, Delhi and other metros. Some of them have won acclaim at events in the fashion capitals of Europe and America. Indian textiles today is moving places, from a lost heritage to international status. Thanks to the efforts of lots of designers, both international and Indian, who are taking the fabric across right to the international catwalks. This really is thanks to the efforts of a lot of Indian designers who are today showing internationally, uh, every season, all across the globe. And, and the fact that there are so many international designers who draw inspiration from the Indian market, the colors, the fabrics, uh, and everything. And I think it's a great place to be and has a great future. Government initiatives to further these developments include export-oriented apparel parks, entities such as the National Institute of Fashion Technology, NIFT, to professionalize the textile industry. NIFT started in the year 1986 at Delhi with the premier uh, intention of uh, providing professionals uh, to uh, the industry which was growing even at that time. NIFT is uh, really you know, trying hard to cope up with the demands of the industry and providing good professionals. In 86, we started with one institute. Now, this year, we have, in the year 2008, we are starting four more institutes to make it uh, 12 centers across uh, the country. The offshore uh, center at Mauritius is also likely to start in the month of late August. India's rich and diverse handloom heritage made a potent statement, binding history and culture with economics and commerce. About 6.5 million Indians are employed in the handloom sector the second most vital livelihood base after agriculture. Hence, the well-being of this sector is crucial. If we have so many viewers in our whole country, poor people, handloom viewers, in our home, cottage industry, we have weaving in our home, we have artisans and handicrafts, who are also sitting in our own house, and who are making good pieces. For them, maybe in Hindustan, there is no ministry of the ministry. This is a very big scheme. इंश्योरेंस स्कीम तीन चार प्रकार की स्कीमें जिसमें पढ़ने की सुविधा हो एक्सीडेंट होता है तो क्या उसमें सुविधा मिलेगी इतना ही नहीं किसी का स्वर्गवास हो गया कोई मर गया तो उसके लिए फैमिली के लिए क्या सुविधा होगी ये सब हमने जितना भी हो सके इतना उसमें हमने रियायतें दी है अमंग इंडियाज ग्रेटेस्ट हैंडलूम प्रोडक्ट इज द साड़ी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट वर्सिटाइल अटायर्स इन दर्ल्ड ड्रेप टू सूट ईच वेयर इज यूनिक बिल्ड फिगर एंड ओकेजन ऑफ यूज it is a notable example of a one-size-fits-all garment. Woven mainly in cotton or silk, often adorned with distinctive motives in gold or silver thread called zari, the most prized of these, named after their places of origin, include Banarsi, Chanderi, Kanchipuram, Petani, and Patola. The survival of these distinctive designs through more than a century of competition from mill textiles shows that India has retained her glorious traditions. The integrated handloom cluster development scheme promotes small and medium enterprises, SMEs, in remote interior areas and encourages growth and viability of the cluster. Let us welcome them. 
Handloom Mark Scheme, launched by the Prime Minister in June 2006, is aimed at promoting handloom fabrics and garments as a brand. Handloom Mark Scheme is being implemented by the Textiles Committee under the guidance of the Development Commissioner Handlooms. Uh, we have recently introduced the Handloom uh, Cluster Scheme whereby 250 clusters have been selected all over the country and we are uh, subsidizing and paying for professional designers to be posted in these uh, clusters, helping them with exhibitions and buyers and seller meets and any other form of help that they need after a full diagnostic study is covered. The advent of power looms has transformed a traditional craft into a modern industrial process. The power loom sector functions mainly through the unorganized SMEs. However, it accounts for a major portion of India's textile production, focusing mainly on purely functional items such as daily wear saris, sheets and spreads, tarling and hosiery items. There are 19.46 lakh power looms in the country, distributed over approximately 4.34 lakh units. While most of these SMEs are concentrated in a few cities such as Surat, Coimbatore, Ichalkaranji and Solapur, some of them can be found clustered in remote areas. Their output often matches that of large mills in the organized sector. The power loom sector contributes 63% of the total cloth production of the country and provides employment to about 48.65 lakh persons. As a country, India is very strategically placed to take advantage of the developments in the textile and apparel area. We are the second biggest producer of cotton, the second biggest consumer also. We are very well placed in man-made fibers, silk and jute and many other fibers. With the growing uh, boom and the development in the Indian economy, which is growing at more than 7 to 8 percent per annum, we expect that the demand in apparel will grow at over 16 percent per year. Similarly, the demand in the international trade in textile and clothing is expected to develop at over 6 percent compounded annual growth rate year on year. All these will give a big boost to the Indian textile and clothing field. Another important textile product of India is the carpet. It ranges in intricacy and price from the Kashmir varieties, similar in technique and spirit to the products of Persia and Central Asia, to the more modest kind manufactured in places such as Moradabad, Badoi, Mirzapur and Panipat. The export market under the quality control and supervision of the Carpet Export Promotion Council of India has witnessed growth in the past three years. India has been producing silk for more than 15 centuries. Today, it ranks second in the world in this regard. Research and development serves to improve the yield and quality of raw material. The process is used at different stages from extracting it to producing fabric and to promote designs that make it competitive in the world market. In order to provide support and incentives for the production of quality cocoon and raw silk, Central Silk Board's Catalytic Development Program, CDP, is being implemented in the different silk producing states of the country. India produces more than half of the world's jute. It is a cheap packaging material for bulk transport of food grains and some other granular and coarse powdery materials. Such use, mandatory for food grains and sugar, ensures a market for jute. It is now also used in refined forms to make fashionable apparel and accessories. The labor-intensive jute industry sustains some 4 million farm households, directly employs about 260,000 industrial workers and provides livelihoods in allied activities to another 140,000 persons. The government supports this sector with market and duty incentives, technology upgradation, research and diversified use, design innovation and product development through reputed institutions such as NID and NIFT. Wool accounts for a relatively small part of India's textile fiber production, mainly in small units across the northern and western parts of the country. The common sources of raw material are sheep and camel. 
There are several government initiatives to enhance the wool sector both quantitatively and qualitatively and to bring about more breadth in the range of products exported. Mink blankets made from a blend of wool and synthetic fiber are one of the important quality items produced in India and exported worldwide. It's a matter of happiness that in spite of all odds, the performance of textile sector has achieved a very good results in the last four to five years. Government is taking all steps to strengthen the textile sector by providing better infrastructure, training of manpower, and overall conducive fiscal atmosphere. A notable example of such viability is the state of Gujarat, a leader in almost the entire range of fabrics, from handloom through paloom to milk cloth, and also contributes significantly to India's worldwide presence in denim, the material for blue jeans, the globally favored informal wear for young and old, poor and rich. Leading brands and jeans around the world today are made of Indian denim. In R&D, Atira, the Ahmedabad Textile Industries Research Association, is one of the oldest such organizations in India. Workers who lost their jobs owing to the closure of textile mills from the 1970 onwards are being compensated and rehabilitated through a Textile Workers Rehabilitation Fund scheme. The textile industry today is witnessing a golden era under the present government. The textile industry in India has come a long way in modern times and is poised to claim its place as a world leader. For sheer quality of its materials and products, the rich tradition underlying them and its quick adaptability to new ideas, designs and technology, India is not easy to match. Until as recently as two centuries ago, the world looked towards India for the best in textiles. The industry is now again looking up and is even attracting foreign direct investment. It is once again a sunrise industry, casting its radiance across the globe. 